Good, so welcome back to the second part of Retopologizing Text, where I'm going to do some more of the lowercase letters. Now, I've decided I'm only going to do the simpler version of the font in this typeface, not the one with all the control loops to make it kind of super tight and accurate to the font. In the version I make available for download, I will include the more accurate version, but I've decided it was just too boring to watch me do all that work adding loops. Most of the time you would really only want this version anyway, so let's make that. So for this video, I'm going to delete the accurate version we made in the last video and move the other one up in Z by 3 and press G, Z and 3 to move this one back into place. I'm going to press F2 and rename it A. OK, now I am going to go a bit faster in this video, hopefully slow enough that you can see what's happening to each letter and I will slow down a bit for the letter E. But I will stop mentioning my key presses after a short while. It's more about the topology and whenever you want to do a letter from a typeface, you'll be able to use this video as a reference. I'll put lots of links in the description so you can always just go to the one you need. Now, I am going to add a keyboard shortcut for one command that gets used a lot, and that command is in edit mode, so I'll tab to edit mode. I'm going to go to select, select loops, and select boundary loops. Now I'm going to right click on this menu choice, choose shortcut, and then press W. So that command will now be used whenever I press the W key in edit mode. It saves me a lot of time. I'm also going to put the finished letter A into a new collection in the outline that just helps to keep me organized. So I'll select the A object, press M and choose New Collection. And I'm going to call this collection Arial Black Friendly, because that's what I'm going to call this version of the 3D typeface. Now, one last change in edit mode again. I want to go to the View tab of the end panel, find the section for 3D cursor, right click while I'm hovering over it and choose Pin. Now, when you go to the Edit tab where the loop tools live, you'll always still be able to see the 3D cursor position. It's just another time saver so I don't have to switch between end panel tabs while I'm working. Now we already have our text object. We have the shrink wrapping target objects. I'll just turn that on so you can see them, but I'll turn it off straight away. And all of the shrink wrapping is already set up on the text object. If you don't know what that all means, you probably want to go back and watch the first video in this series. I'll put a link to that on the screen now. So I can just pick up where I left off. I'll select the text object. I'm going to tab into edit mode and press 1 to go to point select mode. I'm going to select all the vertices for the B. So I'll click, shift and click, press Ctrl and L, and then press P to choose selection to separate these vertices into their own object. I'm going to tab to object mode, select the new object, press F2 and rename it to B. And then I'm going to tab back to edit mode. I'm going to press 1 to go to the front view, press A to select everything, and then Del on the numpad to zoom into it. I want to choose a corner to start from, and I'm going to start here. And I need to decide what I'm going to connect that to, and I'm going to choose just this one here. Then I'm going to go all the way around to the other corner and I need to choose a vertice to connect this to. I'll just choose this one and with the box selected, just press F. I normally like to have three vertices at the back of any curve which has to connect to the other side. Good, now if I start at this corner again and select all the vertices around the outside, if I look at the statistics box, I can see there are 19 vertices in this section. I'm just going to press space over here to space them all out and then I'll do the same on the inside corner. Start here, control click around to the other side and I see there are 13, so I need six more in here. So I'm going to hover over an edge, any edge, press Ctrl R, type 6 and hit enter. Now I'm going to select all of them from corner to corner and space them out. I'm going to press 2 to go to edge mode, select this one at the top and press F until I get all the way around to the other side. Now I want to see how many unconnected vertices I have which need to be connected to the kind of the other side. So if I click on this one up here and then Ctrl click on this one down here, I can see in the statistics that I have seven vertices. So I need seven vertices on this long edge over here. So I'm going to hover over here, press Ctrl R, type 7 and hit enter. Now I generally like to line the vertices up so they're at the same Z height as the vertices they're connecting to. And to do that I can just select them one by one. If I press G to move them, Z to keep it to the Z axis, and if I press Ctrl they'll snap to any vertices they get near. So I'll hover over this one and left click. I do the same for the next one, G, Z, press Ctrl, hover over this, left click, and I'll continue doing that until I get to the top. G, Z, Control, Hover, left click. G, Z, Control, Hover, left click. And so on. Now I want to press 2 to go to edge mode. I'm going to select the bottom edge and fill all of these in by moving the mouse up to the top here and pressing F just until we reach the top. So I want to have two extra edges in here at the bottom. So I'm going to press Control R, roll the mouse until there are two, left click and right click. And I also want some more geometry at the top, so I'm going to hover over to the top here, press Ctrl R, roll the mouse, and I think about five looks good. Left click and right click. That all looks good, so I'm going to press A to select everything, 
and I did make a shortcut for it, but I'm just going to show you this one. So I'm going to go to select, select loops and select boundary loop to just select all the edges around the outside. If I press Ctrl and I to invert that selection, now only the edges on the inside are selected and I can press X, choose edges to delete everything on the inside. If I press one to look at it in point select mode, it all looks good. So now I'm tab to object mode, hover over the shrink wrap modifier and press Ctrl A to apply it. I'm going to tab back to edit mode, press A to select everything, F to fill it in with big end guns. Now I'm going to press I to inset, type 0.001 to make the border. I don't need the end gun faces anymore, so I'll press X and choose faces to delete them. Now I'm going to alt and click near an edge on the inside of the letter to select that loop. I'm going to press GG, hold alt and type minus 30 and hit enter. Now let go of alt. Now I'm going to alt and click at the other side near the other edge. Press GG, hold alt, type minus 30, hit enter and let go of alt. Now I'm going to go back to my corner, select this point and, and select the one it's going to connect to. Press F to create an edge and then move the pointer at this side and just press F until we get around to the other corner. Now I can see that since I made this big border that these two don't line up here anymore. So I just want to move these two up. I'm going to shift and click both of them. Press G, Z and hover over this point just to line those up. It's probably the same for these ones. So I'll just select these two. Press G, Z and hover over this one. Now I'm going to press 2 to go to edge select mode. Select the edge of the bottom. Move the mouse up to the top and press F until it's all filled in. Now I want loops running through the mesh, so I'm going to press Ctrl and R, roll the mouse until there are two loops, left click and right click. Same on the curve around here, press Ctrl R, roll the mouse, left click, right click. Now I'm going to press A to select everything and then Shift and N to recalculate the normals. I just moved the camera a bit and I'm just going to press A to make sure everything's selected. I'm going to press E to extrude, Y for the Y axis, type 0.4 and hit enter. Now I'm going to press 3 for face select mode, Alt click on an edge on the cross section, Shift Alt and click on the hole in the middle, press I to insert these and type 0.04 and hit enter. Now I need to select the boundary loop again. This time I'm just going to press W, which does that automatically for me. I'm going to right click and choose Mark C. I'm going to tab to object mode, press Ctrl and 3 to add a subdivision surface modifier, right click and choose Shared Smooth. Now I'm going to tab back to edit mode and press 2 to go to edge select mode. And I want to add a loop at the top here to tighten up the corners. So I'm going to press Ctrl R and left click. Now press E to make it an even distance from the edge, press F to flip it to the outside edge if I need to, slide it up, then left click, right click and choose Mark C. And I'm going to do exactly the same down at the bottom. Control R, left click, press E to make it an even distance from the edge, F to flip it to the outside edge, slide it down, left click, right click and choose Mark C. And that's probably enough for this letter. So I'm going to tab to object mode and I'm going to go over here and apply our material to it. Now I'm going to right click and say origin to geometry. I'm going to press Shift and S and choose Cursor to Selected. I'm going to change the Z location of the 3D cursor to 0. Right click again, choose Set Origin, Origin to 3D Cursor. Now press Ctrl and A and press R to apply the rotation. I will add a quick simple to form just to test it. Click both the edit mode switches here, choose Z and twist it around a bit. It's all good. I'm just going to delete that symbol to form. We don't need to do that for the rest of the layers. I'm just going to go over to the outliner, select the B, press M and choose Arial Black Friendly just to put it in that collection. OK, that's done. Next letter. So select the text objects, tab into edit mode, press 1 to go into point select mode. And there's not holes in a C, so I can just alt and click anything to select it all. Press P, choose selection, tab to object mode, select the new object, press F2 to rename it to C and tab back to edit mode. I'm going to press 1 to go to the front view, press A to select everything and Dell on the numpad to zoom into it. Now I like to do the C in two halves, so I'm going to select the point in the middle of the back, point to connect it to, press F. Now I'll select these points and control click around to the corner and there are 13 vertices there. Now I'll do the same around the inside edge and there are only 9 there, so this section needs 4 more vertices. So I'm going to hover here, press Control R, type 4 and hit enter. Now I'm going to select from this edge to the corner and press space. Good. Now on the other side, on the outside, if I select here at the edge and control click around to the corner, there are 15 here. Now the inside, click on the vertex at the end of the edge, control click on the corner, and there are 9 here, so I need 6 more. Hover anywhere, press control R, type 6 and hit enter. Now select them all and press space, done. I don't need to fill them in this time, so I'm just going to press 2 to go to edge mode and delete this edge. I'm going to tab to object mode, apply the shrink wrap modifier, Tab back to edit mode, press 1 for point select mode, press A to select everything, F to fill in the end gun faces, press I 
type 0.001, then press X and choose faces to delete the end ones. I'm going to alt and click inside the letter, choose the whole loop on the inside, press GG, hold alt, minus 30, enter, let go of alt. Now I'm going to press 2 to go to edge select mode, select just this edge here, and just hold down F until it's all filled in. Then I'm going to hover over an edge inside the shape, press Ctrl R, roll the mouse so that there are two loops, left click and right click. Press A to select everything, press Shift and N to fix the normals. I move the camera a bit, E to extrude, Y for the axis, type 0.4 and hit enter. Now 3 for face mode, alt and click an edge on the cross section, press I to insert and type 0.04 and hit enter. Now I'll just press W to select just the edges I want, right click and choose mark scene. Now I'm going to tab to edit mode, press Ctrl and 3 and add a subdivision surface modifier, right click and choose shed smooth. Now I'm going to tab back to edit mode and add control loops at the extremities. So Ctrl R, left click, E, F until the dots at the outside and move the loop. And just do the same at the top edge here. Now in tab into object mode, right click, set origin to geometry, shift and S, cursor to selected, change the cursor Z to zero. Now I'm going to right click to set the origin, origin to 3D cursor. Done. I'm going to go over here and apply our material to it. I don't want to test this one, I know it's fine. Again, I'm just going to go over the outliner, select the C, press M and move it into the Arial Black Friendly collection. Now, next letter, the D. Now, there's a nice easy cheat for this lowercase D because it happens to be an exact mirror image of the letter B. So I'm going to select a text object, tab to edit mode and press 1 to go to point mode. I'm going to click a vertex on the outside, one on the inside, press Ctrl and L to select the lot. Now I'm just going to press X and delete all those vertices to get rid of them. Now I'm going to select the letter B, press Shift and D to duplicate it, press R, Z and 180 to flip it around, and now I'm going to press G and X, just move it into position here. I'll press F2 and rename this to D. And that's done, nice and easy. Okay, next letter, the E. Now the E is tricky. It's easily the hardest letter to retopologize in any font. It's the only letter which causes the problems it does cause, but it can be a pain to do it. Now, the letter E is unique in terms of topology because it's only got this one extremity of the tail and the rest of it curves around to cross over itself. And that means when we add the internal edges, they have nowhere to escape from the mesh as they always need to do. You may have noticed already that we always go from a kind of a straight edge to another straight edge. So the loops we create will start here, move around the letter and exit somewhere here. And this section is curved. And if you've ever worked with curved surfaces, you'll know that loop spacing is incredibly important. Otherwise, you're going to end up with visible ridges on your mesh. So on the letter E, we have to preempt those loops with two extra points when we do the spacing. Let me try to show you and hopefully it will make sense. I'm going to start by selecting this vertice here and then all of the vertices all the way around to the next corner. And I'm going to press space and loop tools to space them out. Now you can see I've got two obvious vertices I can connect to the ones on the inside. So I can connect this to this and this to this. But what's going to happen is that the internal loops I make are going to go all the way around the letter and exit here on a curved section. But if I do that at the end, I'll end up with visible ridges on the back of the E and we can't have that. So what I'll do is I'll add two additional vertices which will act as exit points between these two here. And now I'll go back, select this vertice, control and click all the way around to the other side and space everything out again. Now, additionally, I want to add four vertices on this straight edge here and four vertices on this straight edge here. For now, we can get back to our usual method of going from corner to corner. So I can select from here across the top to the next corner and I've got 12 vertices there. And these are going to connect to this section. So I'll select these and I can see I only have nine here. So I need another three in this section. So I'm going to hover over here, press Control R, type three and hit enter. And now I'll space these out as usual. Now I know that these are all going to connect up. Now for the E, we don't want to fill in the faces as we go, as it'll cause problems later if we do that. Now I'll do the same for the bottom section. I'll select all the vertices around the bottom on the outside, and there are 10. I'm going to select all the vertices these will connect to, and there are only 9, so I just need one more in this section. I'm going to press Control anywhere, and then left click. Now I'm going to space these out by selecting them all and pressing Space. Now we have the correct vertex counts everywhere. So I'm just going to select these two edges and delete them. So we need to tab to object mode and apply the shrink wrap modifier. I'm going to tab back to edit mode, press A, F, then I and type 0.001. Press X and choose faces to get rid of the end ones. 
I'm going to alt click near an edge on the inside of the letter. GG, alt minus 30, enter, let go of the alt key. Do the same for the other edge here. GG, alt minus 30, enter and let go of alt. Good now and press 2 to switch to edge selection mode and things are about to get tricky again. We can select this edge here at the extremity and press F to fill all the faces in until we get to this corner here. And now I can select these two opposing vertices in the middle and press F to put an edge between them. And with the mouse to the right of this new edge, just press F, 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 F until we get all the way around to the other corner. Now we have this big gap in the middle, but we can't fill it in yet. First, we need to add the internal loops, which you can do just by hovering over here, pressing Ctrl R, rolling the mouse until there are two loops, left click and right click. Now do the same for the bottom section, Ctrl R, left click, right click. So what about the gap? Well, it's got a border all the way around it. And if we alt and click on any part of the edge here, it'll select it all. And we can now fill this section in using grid fill. So if I go to the face menu and choose grid fill, and it looks like a bit of a mess, but if I change the spans to three and the offset to one, it'll give us exactly the arrangement of faces and vertices we need. Good, now I wanna press A to select everything, press Shift and N to recalculate the normals. I'm gonna to tab to object mode, press Control and three for the subdivision surface modifier, right click and choose shared smooth. I'm going to tab back to edit mode and change to edge selection mode and I want to add a control loop between the first two faces at this extremity. So control R, left click, E, F until the dots at the outside and move the loop. And now I want to add tightening loops to this corner here by alt and clicking this edge so it's all selected and pressing shift and B to bevel it. I'm going to roll the mouse so that there are three loops. I'm going to confirm that and then I'm going to alt and click both of these loops to mark them in red. I might just want to add a tightening loop for this one around these two corners here. Now if I select from edge to edge along this loop I can just press G stretch with project and that just spaces them out a little bit more. You don't have to do that but I often space things out as I go just to avoid heavy patches of geometry wherever I can. Again the version of this typeface that I make available for download will probably have a bit of spacing done on it. Good. Now if I just move the camera a little, I'm going to press A to select everything, E to extrude, Y, type 0.4, right, change to face mode, alt and click around the edge and the hole in the middle, press I and type 0.04, I'm going to press W to select the boundary loops and then right click and choose mark scene. I'll just turn on the edit switch and the sub D modifier and that looks great. So I'll tab to object mode, right click, set origin to geometry, shift and S, cursor is selected, Reset the 3D cursor Z position to zero and again right click and choose set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now I'm just going to go over here and apply our material and then I'm going to select the E in the outliner, press M and move it into our collection. So that's done and I think that's probably enough for this video. I'm going to do five or six letters per video until they're all done. Okay, see you in the next one.